Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to cover container presentational pattern. Now, container presentational pattern is a very common pattern in React applications. And since React and Surf UI are, are just so similar, I was wondering that how can we use this in Surf UI applications? All right. So the basic concept behind container presentation pattern is that we will have a container view. We will call it container view. And there will be some other views inside this. These are, these will be presentation view. And what's going to happen is that the container view itself will be responsible for fetching the data, uh, sorting, you can say filtering, you know, all of those kind of actions. And the presentation views, and there can be more presentation views, they will be kind of like dumb views. The only job of the presentation view would be to, well, present the data. So all the hard part of fetching the data, filtering it, and taking action on the data will be done by the container view. Now you can have many container views and you can obviously have many presentation views. It really depends what you're trying to do. Uh, I mean, I can't even say that if you have one screen, that screen can be represented by a, a container view. And in that screen, if you have other stuff going on, then those can be your presentation view, right? Now, if you go to a different screen, that might be controlled by a completely different container view with completely different presentation view or similar presentation view. In other words, all the stuff that you're gonna do of fetching the data and all that stuff will be in the container view. Now, when I say fetching the data will be in the container view, I don't actually mean that you will be writing URL session.share or whatever inside the container view. You should still have some sort of a web service which will be responsible for fetching the data. So let's go ahead and create a very simple example in which we are going to simply get this data and display it on the screen, okay? Now, depending on the application that you're building, you can make use of the container presentation pattern if you want to, uh, but it really depends on the application. I mean, you know, it if you have a hobby project that you want to do, uh, even like any kind of a project, I wouldn't even say hobby project. I mean, you can build complete apps with this pattern, but we'll talk a little bit about it later on, okay? So let's go ahead. And the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we have some sort of a web service which can give us the data, okay? Now I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the same file since this is just a dummy project and I just wanna show it to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say web service. There we go. And this is not how you will create a web service. So I know that somebody is gonna comment, well, where's the caching layer, where's the testing? Oh, we are not doing all, all of that stuff, okay? We're just learning about the container presentation pattern, all right? Okay, so let's go back over here, copy this URL. And obviously you should create your web service in a separate file. It's not a generic web service. I know that you're wondering, hey, just, just for, I'm just gonna skip a lot of stuff over here. We're just gonna go ahead and say get products and that's it. It will be async throws. And obviously it's going to return you an array of product, which we also don't have. So let's go ahead and create a struct. This is the kind of like our DTO or a client side model or a dumb model, whichever one you want to say decodable, identifiable, that's fine, ID, which will be, I believe, integer, and title, that's it. There are some other stuff that is being returned from the products, but we are just keeping it simple. So inside the get products, again, I'm just gonna take all the shortcuts I can. This is not to show you that how you should implement a web service or a network layer. We are talking about container presentation patterns, so once again, uh, I'm not showing you how you can do those things. I know someone will be there commenting that, hey, well, this is not how you implement a web service. Like, yeah, I know, I wouldn't implement it this way, but that's not really the point of the video. And we'll get the data, we will ignore the response, and now we can go ahead and return JSON decoder dot decode. I think we're gonna get an array of product, so product and the data and the try. Okay, it's pretty simple, just so that we can use it in our application. 
Okay, so we have the web service. The content view over here will be our container. This means that the content view will be responsible for fetching the data. So how do we fetch the data? Well, and if we fetch the data, well, we're gonna put the data, right? So let's go ahead and also create a presenter view or presentation view. The presentation view will be responsible for presenting the data, displaying the data. So it's just a view. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create product list view, which is kind of like a view. And we will have a body. And for now, we don't really have anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say product list view. And that's it. Instead of all of that, I can go ahead and say product list view. And when it is loaded, we can go ahead and call the web service, get the products. And I believe we have to use try await over here because all of this can actually blow up. And we are going to, so this is, the get products is actually going to return you something, right? But we are completely ignoring it. So this is going to return you something, well, an array of products, hopefully. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put it inside our local state products. So this is a local state, the private state for the content view. And we are simply going to go ahead and assign it. Okay. And once we assign it, the whole body is kind of like re-evaluated again. And nothing is really going to re-render because nobody is using the products. But this is our opportunity to pass in the products to the product list view. And now I will go ahead and add products over here. So you can see that we don't have anything over here. We don't really have any aggregate model. We don't have any, you know, the view models, anything like that. Let's go ahead and call it products. And the product list view, which is a presentation view, will be responsible for displaying all of that stuff. So we're gonna go over products. We will get access to the product. And then we will go ahead and display it. Just like normally, how, however you want to display it, product.title. And there we go. So we got all the products, okay? So this is a very common pattern that you can use in your Cifio application. Now, I'm not really recommending any pattern over here. I'm just showing you that this is a possibility, okay? Now, would you use this pattern? Would you not use this pattern? It depends on your application. Maybe you're, a, you're, you're creating application uh, which will benefit from this pattern. Maybe you're creating application that requires more structure, then you may need to go to a different kind of a pattern. But this is a very common pattern in, in the React application, and it can also be applied for Surf UI application because, you know, React, Surf UI, they're, they're kind of like the same thing in the end, all right? Now, one thing to, to know about this container presentation pattern is be careful of adding containers because sometimes what people do is that they will start adding like containers for every single thing. And that's not the point of this pattern. The, the whole point of the container is so that it can host different other nested views like the product list view and maybe some other views. And the whole point is to download the data or to prepare the data and then pass it along to the child view, okay? Now the child view over here, product list view may have some other functions, other closures, like I want to delete an item or I want to select an item or check an item. So those will be exposed by closures and then they will be handled in the container. So that's how you can use this pattern. Now, whenever we talk about this pattern, we should also talk about testing. How would you test this out, okay? Well, depending on your needs, right? Uh, if I want to test this particular thing out, well, I can already see it and I'm satisfied with it. So I may not even write any test for this, but that's just me. I'm comfortable with it. I can see it, it works. What happens if it's not returning you anything? Well, that is something that I would have to, you know, check out in the view, meaning in the Xcode, uh, Xcode preview and see what's going on. So it's all about the comfort level that you have uh, with the code that you're writing. Now, if I were to write some sort of a hotel management system or a hotel website where there are many different filters over here and I want to test it out, 
well, that's kind of complicated. I can't just be confident enough that I'm going to select this filter and it's going to return me two. But if I'm going to select five filters or three filters, it will return me different results. So that definitely needs to be tested out, right? So how do we test out these kind of things? Well, for the container presentation model, you do have a couple of different options. Now, you can't really unit test your code because, well, unit test your view model because you don't really have any view model in this case. Uh, but be careful when you're unit testing using view model because if you're unit testing using the view model, make sure that you are not using the view model to test the interface. That's a very, very brittle kind of a test that you're going to be writing and that can fail most of the time. I actually talk about it over here if you want to read one of my articles, uh, Pragmatic Testing, which basically is testing the behavior and not the implementation details, all right? Now, there can be code, obviously, in your view model, if you're using that approach, that needs to be tested, like maybe it's filtering or sorting, and that's perfectly fine. That is something that you can test in isolation, but don't use your view models, if you're using MVVM or some other framework or pattern, to test the interface using the view model. That is not a good approach. That's very brittle. It can break, and then you're testing the implementation details rather than the behavior of the app. So how do we test this? Well, you have a couple of different options. You can manually see this, it's working. You will be happy with it. If it's complicated, like hotel filters and a lot of filters, then uh, manually testing it might be a problem. Uh, in those cases, the fastest way might be to use View Inspector, where you're checking and actually clicking a button on the screen. So View Inspector is a kind of like a third-party package that you can include, and that can test out that, oh, you click an actual button, rather than the view model saying that, oh, yeah, the button was clicked, you should actually click the button, all right? And the other option would be to do end-to-end -end testing, but end-to-end -end testing is slow, but the reason it's slow is that it is end-to-end, -end. it's testing a lot of things. But I would definitely test out that logic of filtering the hotels or filtering something based on several criteria in isolation. All right, so make sure that you do that using View Inspector or some other technique. So you can definitely do those things, okay? So this is it. This is the container pattern. Um, you can definitely check it out. I would say play around with it. I'm not saying that you should use this. I'm not saying you should use anything. It really depends on your app that you're building, all right? Some people will benefit from it. Other people will benefit from some other pattern because they're building a completely different application. So there is no one-size-fits-all solution for anything in software development. So choose your, you know, choose your pattern with, uh, with the limitations, with the requirements that you have on your project. And that's, uh, that's all I can tell you over there, okay? And that's pretty much it. That is the container presentation pattern. And uh, Try it out, see how it fits your need. Maybe you want to use it in your hobby project. That is perfectly fine. Uh, maybe you want a little bit more structured in your actual official work project. That is perfectly fine. You should go for something else then, all right? So hopefully you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much. If you want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses on Udemy. Uh, you can see I have courses on so if you why, if you're building augmented reality application, that is the best course out there. If you are learning iOS development, but using UI kit, I actually have a fresh course for you. So definitely you can check that one out also. Core data, I have one of the best selling courses for core data, MVVM design pattern, MV pattern, and a lot more. So check out the description and you will find a link to all of my courses. Thank you so much.